to worship, to everyone who is gathered in the sanctuary, and to everyone who may be joining us online. It is a joy to be with you this morning, and I invite you to stand for our call to worship. As a deer longs for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. I remember these things as I bear my soul. God is my hope and Savior presence. By day the Lord offers faithful love. By night God's song is written. Amen. Would you please remain standing for our opening hymn, which can be found in your hymnal on page 384 or on the screens. Love divine, all loves excelling. this morning playing he's uh, fell ill and so he's uh, we have a substitute and uh, we're grateful to have you here this morning as we worship on this Lord's Day I'd like to invite you now to turn to a time of prayer and if you would join me in the opening prayer as printed in your bulletin or on the screen let us pray holy God where could I go that your love wouldn't follow me what could I do that you would give up on me no matter the struggle I face, your spirit is with me always. Your prayers burn my path. Your love is flowing water, clear and strong. Your love is a song in the night, filled with hope and life. You are with us always, a firm presence to guide and restore. We praise you today and every day for the love that you have given us 
and we worship you by offering that love to others in return. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. If you would, take a moment to greet those around you in the name of the Lord. may be seated. Uh, just a few quick announcements for this morning as we reflect on our mission, hospitality, and generosity. As a reminder, there's going to be a little gathering today after, nine, after the 940 service. I'm not really sure what that's all about. <laughs> and as a reminder of other events that are coming, there is the get-together, which will be happening on Sunday, July 10th at 1030. I realize that is very much a different time than when this service normally meets but it will be a once a year event where we are seeking to have the whole church gather under the tent for morning worship. There's been a lot of work put into planning it and we'll, it'll be part of welcoming Pastor Carla Elliott and her family to the congregation. So I hope, well, I won't see you there, but I hope that you will be there. We also have many other things to look forward to with VBS and with meeting kids with the Kids Church Music and Praise at the Carmel Fest Parade. There is a blood drive happening next week um, and several spiritual groups that you can still join if you are looking for ways to grow this summer. If you would like to find out more about these, you are welcome to go to the blue page in your bulletin or to go to stmarkscarmel.org for more information. These are our announcements this morning. I would also remind you, though, if you would please either mark your attendance on the blue pads in your pews or by going online to stmarkscarmel.org slash attend. Those are the announcements that I have this morning. And now it is time to turn things over to the Staff Parish Relations Committee. One of the first things I learned about Julia was that she and I were on the speech teams of our respective high schools. Because I graduated before Julia was even thought about, we have to come to an agreement. There will be no critiquing this message, right? I'd like to talk to you about firsts. On July 1st, 2018, Julia officially joined the St. Mark's family. And a week later, she delivered her first sermon here, entitled, Rooted in Hope. There were many firsts to follow. When I needed a surgical procedure in 2019, Julia was the first St. Mark staff member to appear in the waiting room, praying and offering comfort to my family, despite the fact that she was preparing last-minute details for her wedding just a week away. And her nuptials. As far as I know, Julia is the first staff person at St. Mark's to have lightsabers at her reception. In 2020, Julia quickly learned how to preach and connect and support and serve from a distance as we entered the COVID-19 pandemic, a first for all of us. Julia, you've led the current service. You've guided our youth through confirmation. You've started new group studies, and you've attended youth retreats, often driving back Saturday night to be ready to preach on Sunday morning. And through all of the blessings you've brought to our St. Mark's family, we've seen that you have and will continue to put your love for Jesus Christ first. Know that you and Kyle are going to Kokomo with our prayers and our very best wishes. I think it's fitting to share with you from the book of Philippians, the third verse of the first chapter. I speak for all of us when I share Paul's words. I thank my God in every remembrance of you. Ten out of ten. She gave me a ten! <laughs> I need 
the bolt. Hold it, Karen, I need the bulletin. I need the bulletin. the service. We're, we'll be having a reception, uh, more formal reception after the 940 service uh, this morning. And so uh, we uh, will also be praying for Julia in a few minutes when we have our morning prayers. But uh, uh, we, we do give thanks and wish her well. I'd like to invite you now to hear this morning's lesson from 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 1 through 4 and then verses 8 through 15. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, he got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of the, that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elisha? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. This is the word of God for the people of God.
so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, invite us to a time of silence and then a pastoral prayer. But before we do that, I would like Pastor Julie to come forward. Oftentimes when it's uh, uh, a person's last Sunday, we will like gather around that person and lay on uh, hands on them. We won't do that this morning, partly because of uh, our COVID-19 distancing. But I would like uh, Pastor Julia to be afore, uh, before us. And uh, I would like for you to just kind of reach out your hand and, and symbolically as we uh, uh, anoint her for what's next in her life and ministry and give thanks for her uh, ministry here at St. Mark. So if you would, let's, uh, uh, let's join in prayer. Almighty God, we do give you thanks for Pastor Julia, for the things that she has brought to our congregation. We pray that you might bless her in this new ministry, be with she and Kyle as they uh, move to a new home, as they establish uh, a new uh, base of, of reaching out in your name. We thank you for the ways that we've seen her grow in, uh, in her call, and I thank you for the strength of that call which continues to sustain her in ministry and to give her an, an, inter, an inner um, strength as she uh, does the work to which you have called her each day. I pray that you might surround her with our prayers, surround her with a measure of your spirit, give her encouragement, and uh, just prepare her for the days ahead that she might uh, be received into this new congregation with a sense of joy and celebration and that she might begin to make uh, new friends and new colleagues in ministry as she uh, works for the, uh, for the mission that you have given her to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Just guide her path and give her a clear, uh, clear way uh, before her, be a light unto that path, guide and direct her in all that she does, and we give you thanks for all that she has done here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless. This time I'd like to invite us into a silent time of silent prayer, and then I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer. So let us be in silent prayer together. Almighty God, we pray now for all the world, the church, people of faith, and those who live in want. God of kings, prophets, children, and all who are in need, we give you thanks for the breath of life you pour into the living and into us all when we are in trouble. Bless your world in times of struggle and days of rejoicing. Make us one with you and one another. We thank you for your care of the earth especially for rain and sun, for flowers that give food to bees, for fish in all their shapes and colors, and for the shelter we find underneath your trees. Let all creation praise your name. We pray for the church, the fellowship in this congregation and in the families of faith in all the lands. Give us both comfort and challenge. Teach us to give thanks for insights new to us, Make us able to rejoice with people of other faiths. We pray, O oh God, for people everywhere to take courage, especially this day the people who face uncertain future. For widows and widowers, divorced parents, children, orphans, all who live alone, families of origin and families formed by friendship, that they find love and community and comfort in you. For all in any need, for those enduring cancer treatments, those awaiting and recovering from surgery, those reshaping their lives from tornadoes, fires, floods, for people who have no food, no work, no self-respect, and for those who are in our hearts and in our thoughts today, we pray, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for our fathers and those who have nurtured us in life and in the faith. 
And we pray, O oh God, that we might nurture a new generation and parent them into a life everlasting. For all the saints who from their labors now rest, we pray. We place into your safekeeping all for whom we pray, trusting in your wisdom, the needs of all people will be met through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray, in whose prayer we pray, uh, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our mission focus for June is Greater Indy Habitat for Humanity. In Indiana, one in nine households spend half or more of their income on housing, which means families are having to choose between buying food, health care, or keeping the lights on. Habitat offers home ownership to low-income families who are otherwise unable to obtain home financing. Research shows that their program leads to benefits beyond housing, including improved mental health, a decreased reliance on social services, and improved academic achievement of children. You can make financial do donations this morning by using the mission offering envelope and putting it in, in the uh, plates as they are passed, or you can go to stmarshcollin.org slash give. Because you give, St. Mark's gives. Let us pray. God of power and might, as we offer our gifts to you this morning, we remember how dependent we are on your love and mercy for every good and helpful thing in our lives. We affirm in our giving that all the money and possessions in the world cannot rescue us from those things that torment and tug at us every day. When we've tried to fix things on, on our own, we have failed. When we put our trust in your loving power made known to us in Christ, we have found our lifeline. Dedicate these gifts in our lives that we might not only find our way, but lead others toward Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 8, verses 29 through 36. Or rather, verses 26 through 39. Apologies. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And as he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me? Jesus, Son of the Most High God, I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss, and now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed, and then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Earlier, Karen was mentioning first, and this today is another first, as this is the first time I will be leaving a congregation, the first time clearing out an office, and this last week, it is truly amazing the things that you can find when you start to sort and pack. <laughs> Everything from old letters and missing books to even a few old bulletins and sermon manuscripts, even finding that first sermon that I preached at St. Mark's. And it made me laugh realizing how things can come full circle that that first sermon was about being rooted in hope, and now here we are one more time talking about the importance of hope and how hope can change everything. Hope is sometimes hard for us to hold on to. It's hard for us to hold on to it when it feels like we are alone, when it feels like we're in the midst of struggle. The people in today's scriptures, in today's stories, they definitely had an idea of what that was like, wouldn't you agree? Everything from Elijah the prophet to the unnamed man possessed with demons, there is this repetition of stories of people who feel that they are alone, who find themselves in stressful positions, who find themselves facing struggle. And then, to their amazement, God is right there. To start with looking at the earlier story of Elijah, let's remember that when we get to, when we come to Elijah, as Pastor Brian read earlier for us, he has already been through so much, through political persecution, religious headaches, up to and including having to prove that his God actually does exist, and all of that ending with the queen of his country saying that she wants him dead. That is a lot to be handling. That's a lot to be holding. Is it any wonder that after running for his life and collapsing under a bush in the middle of the desert, that his prayer to God was, I can't do this anymore. I can't 
do this. I'm tired. I need rest. I need help. And the part that makes me smile every time I remember this story, because truly this is one of my favorite stories from the Old Testament. I was so glad when it came up in the lectionary. My favorite part is that after saying this prayer of saying, I can't do this, an angel appears to Elijah and tells him to get up and eat, to drink water, and then to rest to do some self-care because all of the troubles of this world are a lot easier when we've had a meal, a glass of water, and a good nap. We got to take care of ourselves if we're going to get through all these struggles and messes. But after doing these things, after having a chance to rest, Elijah gets up and goes the rest of the way to Mount Horeb and finds there a cave to rest and recover. And while he's there, Again, remember, he got the message that God will be passing by soon. And he wants to see God. After everything that he has been through, after everything that has happened, Elijah needs to see God. Needs to draw close, to try and understand, to talk and see what could be, what could be waiting. So he's seeking God out. And there was the sound of a powerful wind, then a sound of a mighty earthquake, the sound of a raging fire, all of these big, attention-worthy things. And yet God didn't speak to Elijah through any of these three. Rather, God spoke to Elijah through a soft sound, like a gentle whisper, like a parent comforting a child after a nightmare. I am here. I am here. Elijah, what is wrong? What do you need to tell me? Tell me everything from your perspective. I am here. So Elijah does just that. He tells God everything. He bears his soul, he bears his troubles, his sorrows, his fear. And God takes it all in, everything that is surmounting, that is equaling, that Elijah is saying, I feel alone. I have been through so many struggles, and now I feel like I am the only one left. How can you expect me to keep going forward if it's just me? Have you ever felt that way of, how can I do this thing when it's just me? When it's just one person having to complete a, a large task? Have you ever felt that way, felt that struggle, felt that uncertainty of if you ask for help, help will arrive? Maybe it wasn't with something quite as large as getting into difficulties with political figures or trying to lead revo religious revolutions. Maybe it's something more simple and closer to home, like the unnamed man in the gospel reading who again, has been through it, albeit in different ways. Where Elijah was dealing with problems that involved government intrigue and religious struggle, the, pers the unnamed man is facing struggles of a more personal nature because he's an outcast from society, from his home. He is very sick. He is not well. He has known what it's like to be homeless, to not have clothes to wear, to be locked up in chains and under guard, only to then manage to break free and wander off to live alone near the tombs. He knows what it is to struggle and to feel like the world has turned its back on him. But then again, there again, Jesus arrives. And much like Elijah, this man goes seeking God out. He goes looking for Jesus. He meets Jesus when he arrives in this new land. And he recognizes Jesus. What will you do to me? What have you to do to, with me? Is there any way that you can be with me in this struggle, in this suffering? Is there anything that you can do when everything feels so broken? And Jesus says, I've got this. I'm here. 
you're not alone. The struggle does not last for forever. And it amazes the townspeople, all the people of the country, when they arrive and find that this outcast, this man who was so sick, who was so hurting, was in his right mind and was sitting at the feet of Jesus, was learning from the great teacher. It's a miracle. It's amazing. But it's also terrifying. And this, this is the rub, because God is always there to give hope to us, to breathe hope back into our lives, to say, I am here in your struggle. Whatever you are facing, whatever challenges are before you, when you feel like you are alone, God is with you. But what about the rest of the world? What about the people around us? What about us who claim to be Christians? Where are we and what is God leading us to do? In the case of the unnamed man, the people around him said, look, it's great that he's feeling better, but this is a big change. This messed with our local economy. The pigs are dead. Um, this is different. This is strange. This is scary. We don't like this. We don't like having everything shifted around on us and changed. Because that's part of the price of hope. Part of the price of hope is knowing that things can and will change and believing that it will still be good, that joy can still be found. The townspeople may have turned their back on the unnamed man, but Jesus reminded him to not turn his back on them, that he had been healed, that he had found hope, and that there were other people like him, not with the same struggles necessarily, but other people who had faced struggles, who needed a word of hope, a word of life and love. So Jesus told him to stay. Stay and be there for others. Stay and care for others. Stay and offer hope wherever you can to whoever needs it. And Elijah found his hope again after God told him, look, here is someone to crown as king. Here is someone to follow and to train as a new prophet. Here are all of these hundreds of people who believe the way that you do. You are not alone. Now go and be with them. We need one another. We need God to find our hope, to find our salvation. And sometimes, for those of us who are called to the path of Christianity, to follow Jesus, sometimes we are called to stay put, to stay and witness, to stand with those who are in need, and to offer them love and support. God is our source of hope, but one another this beloved community, we are what helps to keep that hope burning bright. We are the hands and feet of Jesus in a world that needs us desperately. And I know it can be hard to face these struggles and to wonder what will come next, what will be, what is still waiting to happen. The staff members at St. Mark gifted me with with a poem um, by Rosemary Ortola Traumer called, titled Hope. And I'd like to share it with you this morning. Hope has holes in its pockets. It leaves little crumb trails so that we, when anxious, can follow it. Hope's secret, it doesn't know the destination. It knows only that all roads begin with one foot in front of the other. We may not know when the pain will end or when the change will come. We may not always be clear of what is before us. But as my time with you comes to a close, as my time as your pastor comes to a close, I hope and pray that you will remember to hold on to hope that you will continue to put 
one foot in front of the other, that in the face of struggle, in the midst of change and trial, may you remember that hope goes on, that there is still more to discover, more love and joy to find. Things can change for the better. So one more time, your story is not over yet. Keep going. Keep being the hope in your community. Would you please pray with me? Lord, I thank you for the hope that St. Mark's has given to me personally, and also the hope that they offer to the greater community, to the world, to the people who are so desperately in need, because Lord, we know that this world needs hope. We need to believe that things can change, that they can be better than we ever imagined. In your Son, we find that hope recognized. And in our worship of you, we take that hope within us, and may we share it with a world in need. Lord, we praise you. I thank you for this congregation, for the love that they have shown, and for the love that they will continue to share. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. Would you please stand for our closing hymn? with the benediction this morning. In the United Methodist Book of Worship, there is a special order of farewell offered to a pastor or deacon when they are leaving a church. So I thank you, the members and friends of St. Mark's United Methodist Church, for the love and support you have shown me while I have ministered among you. I am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made, and as I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. I accept your gratitude and forgiveness, and I forgive you in return, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I release you from turning to me and depending on me. I encourage your continued ministry here and will pray for you and for your new pastor, Carla Elliott. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting. We give you thanks for cherished memories and commend one another into your care as we move in new directions. 
Keep us one in your love forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May you enter God's gates with thanksgiving. Go in peace.